1870, North Adams, Massachusetts was a shoe manufacturing center. And the workers started to agitate for higher pay and so on. So they went on strike. Mr. Sampson ran a shoe factory. He decided to break the strike. So he sent his assistant to San Francisco, who contacted a labor contractor who found 75 young men. Young in those days meant age 14 to 22. So they came by train and a foreman who actually spoke English, Charlie Singh. The strikers came with rocks and sticks to meet the train, but then the sight of these 75 young Chinese was so strange that they threw one rock and that was it. They were sort of like in awe, right? They all had the same clothing, black Chinese felt hats and cloth shoes. Well, they turned out to be not only more productive, but got paid less. So Samson actually sent for another 40 or 60 or so. But then after 10 years, the contract was over. Samson was moving to, on to other things. And most importantly, went back because they were guaranteed a return ticket to San Francisco. A few of them probably got to Boston, very likely. Maybe some of the older ones. Look at the 1870 census, there's 75 Chinese. Look at the 1880 census, there's a handful. At the same time this is going on, the Northeast is industrializing very fast. The West is undergoing ethnic cleansing. The Chinese have settled into the Rocky Mountains, the West Coast, all along the West Coast. They worked on farms, they worked on canneries, they dug ditches, they, I think, created the Sacramento River. They were everywhere because they were good workers and they came as crews. They became competitive with the European immigrants who were coming across on the railroad. They became a competition. So the Chinese Exclusion Act was passed in 1882, essentially to solidify that. Now because of the North Adams strike breaking, all the unions turned against the Chinese. So when the Chinese arrived in Boston, there was no job they could get. No one would hire them. The Chinese were seen as you know, undesirable. <laughs>